the latter stages of uh, Dead Ringers, I came up with a Mark Kermode, which I've been quite enjoying doing. You know, Mark Kermode, the Ben and Jerry film critics, one scoop Belgian chocolate truffle, the other bitter disappointment. I don't know. <laughs> Peter. Oh, listen, guys, I just want to talk mm -hmm. to you briefly, a little bit of theatrical news. Um, as you know, Beverly Knight was on at the Palladium when Sir Andrew Lloyd Webber was starting to begin the social distancing as an experiment. Yeah. And then yeah. I am going back to do Sleepless, as in Sleepless in Seattle, Sleepless, the musical at the Troubadour Theatre in Wembley. We start rehearsal on the 12th. It's going to be social distanced. But obviously, it's a beginning for us all. I know the soaps have gone back, but I'm talking about live theatre, and it's just a start. And although we're, I'm only doing a limited run, you know, it's a beginning for us all, and that's important. But yes. before we go any further, please like and subscribe to us on YouTube. Oh, yes. And like and follow us on Facebook. And follow us on Twitter. And don't forget to tweet. <laughs> yes, and don't forget, of course, Instagram. Instagram yes. is one of the most important things today. I like Instagram. Instagram yeah, is me. You can see that I'm uh, socially uh, distancing uh, um, myself from Sherry. Do you like uh, this? Darling, can I just ask you? May I just ask you, darling? What are you wearing? Sorry, I am being, I'm, I'm socially distancing myself from all of you. This <laughs> is the most fantastic thing. It's a visor. <laughs> Isn't it great? And you can get it great. from Oh, I see. The thing that I like the most about it is, look, I can put it like that. Wow. Wow. And do you know what I think? Do you know what I think, Debbie? I think it's like a natural filter that you have on your camera. We can filter it. We can just make yes. it slightly yes. hazy and have a walking filter so we don't have to uh, augment anything. Yeah. Any, anyway, you very, can wear it with your glasses good. as well. What? You can wear it with your glasses. Uh, so can I, really darling, can I just you. can I just ask you? So yeah. do you can you wear that and just clean it, or do you don't have? It's not a throwaway, is it? No, it's not a throwaway. You wear it. You can wear it, Brilliant. and you just. You just clean it. But it's much yeah. nicer than having a horrible mask. And if you oh. go to our website, amazingwonderbirds.com, you can get this for 20% off. It's got little glasses, wow. you can wear glasses with it. So it's Clinic Must Haves. And there is a Wonder Birds a code on that, and you get it for 20% off. It's £10 to everybody else. But to Wonder Birds fans, it's £8. It's Woo! really worth it. So I might do it with a mask as well. I might do glasses, mask. And the and what I'm going to call the natural filter. Yeah, absolutely right. And actually, it's a big saving because I just paid about eight quid for some throwaways on Saturday. Me too. So, yeah. And I can't can I even just say, them. Can I just say that I am channeling Bill Tommy, Jack Duckworth from Coronation Street because I have now left. I have to say, D with these. As you can see, sticky tape. That's it. Oh. <laughs> That's all I've got. Well, wow. that's, that's the end of my glass. Can I say, darling, it's an artistic <laughs> statement. It's beautiful. Oh, thank you. Yes. Oh, I'll keep them then. It's yeah, like it I can't keep them on stretch. <laughs> <laughs> it looks very fetching. You could put a little <laughs> design on it as well, darling. It's just the beginning. Yes. No, it's customised, like my hat, you see? Yes. Because I, I must like tell you very quickly, <clears throat> the hat, not to take away from um, anyone else, but this hat is customised with polka dots because I've just found out that polka dots <laughs> have a big significance oh. in fashion. But we, there was a Channel 4 um, documentary about polka dots. Say no more. Oh, say no more, and we won't say any more. Because no. what we do today, <laughs> today, we have, we are lucky enough to have a couple of world leaders. This is a Wonder Birds a spectacular special. So we yes. are lucky enough to have our leader, Boris Johnson, who has joined us today. Boris, we need to ask you a lot of very serious questions. What do you have to say to us? I'd like to say to, to, to the Wonder Girls, Birds, Floor. The, 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 the live of birds has changed because we've been in self isolation. I to the liver birds. Uh, everyone drinks profligate amounts of alcohol. I myself have been to, 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 to Scotland. I went, I went to Orkney, became a druid, and then working my way back down, I'm going to meet uh, your, your, the, 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 the first minister of Scotland for a black eye test. Uh, 
<laughs> Somewhat similar to Dominic Cummings, lots of castles and a good old boff right on the end of my beak stroke optical fracture. Fwah! <laughs> Lewis McLeod, impressionist extraordinaire, one of my best friends in the universe. I am so thrilled to have you on this show. I've missed oh. you, my baby. You're my baby boy, aren't you, That's my child? That's right, dear. Louise! <laughs> she always calls me Louise. Louise! And yes, I am. He's my little Louise. And who am I to you? Oh, <laughs> Deborah. Yeah, Deborah. <laughs> no, the menorah is Deborah. I found these pictures, Lulu. Oh, brilliant. Ah, oh, there you go. Daddy. My oh. father with Bob Hope. And oh, amazing. Wow. Isn't that amazing? It's Absolutely picture. amazing. Uh, that's the one. Oh, look at that. Jerry Lewis. Wow. Dean Martin. I know. And that's when he, he, he stole the bill from the London Palladium. So we have, oh. we have, sorry, Don, what are you saying? Yeah, because that was, wasn't that taken after a concert at the Palladium where he, I mean, they just, he, he just blew it away, didn't he? Just, yeah. Uh, he was the bottom it. of the bill and they were the top and he had a standing ovation and they hardly got anything. And that's and why next, Dino's going like that. Hey, yeah. this guy's, this guy's good. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. That's oh, lovely. That's lovely. So that's why we are so connected. So that's why we're so connected, Lewis. Yeah, I you believe know. that very much. So you know. But we are. We have been friends for. We've been friends for many, many years, and I'm so excited that you've joined oh, us. I'm today. thrilled to be on. It's great to be asked on. Thank you, Mr. Trump. I would like to ask you, how are you in this country? You know, I've always wanted to say Harriet Thorpe. Wow. <laughs> She's a ten. <laughs> You know, she really golden, golden girls, wonder birds, great, and liver, liver birds, great girls. Well, you how know. are you? Why are you here, Mr. <laughs> Trump? How are you here in this country, Mr. Trump? Well, you know, it's not going so great at the moment. The ratings are down, down, but they'll go back up. It's a fake news media, you know, they're all saying <laughs> terrible things. You know, basically, the election has been won not in politics, it's who can run up a flight of stairs the quickest. My squeaky Joe Biden. He, hey, hey, folks. <laughs> you know, I just take the elevator and I get to the top floor quicker than anybody. There's a lot of people that want to cut the cable, though. <laughs> Lewis, who is, who is your favorite person that you do impressions um, of? Oh, there's loads, Harriet. There's the, 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 um, I don't know. The, the ones that are new always are quite exciting to do. Like, but last couple of weeks ago when we were doing... It's a lot of stages of uh, Dead Ringers. I came up with a Mark Kermode, which I've been quite enjoying doing. You know, Mark Kermode, the Ben and Jerry film critics. One scoop Belgian chocolate truffle, the other bitter disappointment. I don't know. <laughs> some of them just kind of land a wee bit easier than others. Obama was quite, a, 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 a bizarrely, a, a, an easy one to do because he, um, it was a friend of mine, Adam Longworth, said, you could do Obama. And I never really thought that his voice is quite similar in tone. You know, to get that um, very sort of down there. It's always in the speeches. There's sincerity at the highest level. Did, <laughs> Lewis, when you were a kid, wow. did you used to do that with the children, with your teachers and things? Did you yeah, always do so. it? We had a teacher called Mrs. McCallum. And she <laughs> had an electric razor. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so you've we, always we done that your whole life. It's in, instinctive to you. Pretty much. My brothers are mimics. Um, both of Callum yeah. and Don were, were, were always oh. doing voices. It was always the Monty Python sketches. And my old man, he would tape the, the skits. Uh, I guess fa were families doing that? I mean, every family, when you watch like, uh, like families from the 40s, 50s through, there's always entertainment. But I, I always wonder, often wondered if that sort of waned in the 60s and 70s. But we were always doing something at the table we were always entertaining each other but a natural instinct yes. and talent you have for actually it the sound the music the music of each voice you yeah. nail brilliantly don't you oh thank it's you well the, talking about the tune i remember i got cast in a radio 2 production called millport it was written by lynn ferguson and lynn is a terrific playwright and her brother uh, was the presenter of the late show that james that james Corden's doing now <laughs> This is absolutely amazing. The Wonder Birds. Let's all sing. Um, but Lynn Ferguson gave me the chance to uh, play this character. And she said, ostensibly, he's the cleverest character in the piece. And I went, oh, this is great. Uh, but he only had two words to say, which were, uh, which were eh and I. So he'd be thinking with eh and I. He was always in the affirmative. And I said, well, why is he cleverest in the, in the piece? And she said, well, because he can't say no. He always wants to agree. And I said, no, he's an idiot. <laughs> it's like, you know, 
<laughs> and she recast me because she said, you've not got the tune. You've not got the tune right, which was bizarre because I'd never even really? considered that speech would be music. That Actually, you could find somebody's voice by singing it, which is really quite a, a thing. And once I figured that out, I actually made mimicry a lot easier. I could get the voices much quicker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, Interesting. So, um, Lewis, um, I just want to ask you, because this is happening all the time, constantly now, that people are setting up their own home studios because people are not traveling anymore. And I'm, I'm assuming that's what you've set up there. So in this lockdown, has I mean, it doesn't affect you too much because I assume your voiceovers, but has it affected you in the sense that you do not travel, you work from home basically now? Well, it's kind of, having had this virus foisted on everybody, I was sort of in the, the late stages of putting a studio together around about November. And it was really yeah. just for my own own use. I've got, it's, I mean, it's tiny. It's like two meters square. It's not big at all, but uh, it's, it's perfect for, for what I do. And I was thinking that maybe I've got my a wee keyboard in here. I could just do it as a hobby. Just at the weekends, if I was home, I could play music or whatever. And never really considered... Um, because I always thought that people that had voiceover studios, they just look so lavish and that they've got the, and they're all yes. so technically savvy. I can barely operate my own microwave oven and I'm really serious. <laughs> I, I've, I've figured out a way of just extending the time on it. I can't do the thing. I can open the fridge door, close that, that's fine. But uh, <laughs> so we've got a friend who's self-isolating with us and it, it just worked out really well. He's an engineer, so he wired up the studio steve wow. hi so Good. he kind of and his friend owns a company called audience and they gave us this wee box called the evo 4 so suddenly Ooh. everything just sort of fell into place it was a bit What's kind of fisher evo price four? Fab, it's evo like four. the evo it's 4 the evo 4 yes hello not the fab Mike fa PM. not the fab 4 no the fab 4 that's fab 5 but you know yeah the fab four. Four. yeah of course it says it should have been invented by paul mccartney you know hey <laughs> It's yeah. the Evo 4, it's yeah. on the floor, it's yeah. next to your door, and it makes you lose more. <laughs> I think you need to come oh. in and do a voiceover in every accent that you possibly can for the Wonderbirds. Absolutely. And so we can cover the whole market with people the they love. Yeah, but it's it's like a, it would be like a Marvel movie, wouldn't it? Yeah. Talking of which, Lewis, the Moving last again, time I again. saw you, oh, last okay. time I saw you, you were at... You were actually at a charity ball. Debbie brought you along to this charity ball. It was That's an right. amazing auction. And there were some fantastic prizes, like big prizes, what money can't buy. And guess yeah. who actually raised the, the most by us auctioning you? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I remember that. Because you didn't, you had. Um... One of the Terra Hawks uh, maquettes, puppet. No, I don't want to. I've got to get the term one right. Of what the, is, what, original. One of the th Thunderbirds puppets. Thunderbirds. It was a Thunderbirds. Yeah. Wow, it was amazing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's right. And you were just, you were brilliant. And you, oh, actually, thank you. The auctioneer was pretty experienced, and you got up, and that was it. You took the floor. <laughs> wow. And then we sold you. Yeah. Yeah, you auctioned. Brilliant. It was Postman Pat, wasn't it? Because you know, I did the voice That's of right. Postman Pat. So, we, hello. If you'd like to, you know, have a special, <laughs> yes. special now. But the thing is, now they've got those um, celebrity voice messages. Uh, yeah. You can get. You don't need to go to an auction anymore. You just I go to the thirty <laughs> quid, and you can get a, a message from whoever. You know. I know. But you're amazing. You're oh, there's, thank there's, you, there's, a, there's a lovely story that you tell about one of your daughters when, when she used to say that you were person pat at school. Yeah, well, uh, they, they just didn't believe her. They still don't. You know, they Because they, they, <laughs> then it was Star Wars. Once they go, so hang on a minute. And uh, she's a bit nervous about telling them anything I work on now because in case they go, no, 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 you're not. No, you're not. <laughs> no, he's not. It's, you know, yeah. <laughs> well, we, I was postman pat. They, they, um, the postman Pat, I've been doing that since about 2008. And yes. the characters sort of uh, become a thing. And uh, But, you know, just to say on what you were saying there, Dee, you know, when you get asked to do a message, sometimes that can, they, they don't quite like you doing that now. So you've got to get agreement mm. from them. And I said, look, this is ridiculous. You've got kids in hospitals and things like that. And uh, yeah. why, don't, why don't we have like a little, you know, just a bit of film since his mouth doesn't really move. And we'll just yes. uh, read it. So we came to an arrangement with them that actually we could Good. do these and send them out. And it was like this sort of standard little bit of film, which is great. To personalise it. Yeah, yeah that's a brilliant from idea. Postman, from Postman Pat? Well, Postman wow. Pat now, right enough. I mean, after lockdown, yeah. look at me. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> You're gorgeous, Lewis. Gorgeous. <laughs> Lewis, yeah. I want you to come. We'd love you to come back on the show. Would you do that and, and do some more voices for oh, us? Oh, yeah, then? of course. Absolutely. Please. Because yeah, we, can... we love you to pieces. Can, and... can oh, we hear you do like a, like a super, like you said, the, the Marvel comics for the Wonderbirds? How would that be? The Wonderbirds from <laughs> planet Earth, they come to save the day. Restoring yeah. sanity in a world gone mad. Wow, your voice Wonder Birds. Yeah, wow. Lewis, Thank you. <laughs> Lewis, who is your voice on Star Wars? Who are you on Star Wars? Oh, it's a, it's a character called Sibulba. And uh, he's, 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 the race, he's a, his, his ethnicity is Doug, D-U-G, which is a Glasgow word. He's a Doug. Um, <laughs> And uh, he walks on his uh, on his hands, and uh, so it's all, all the opposites. And he's just got a very guttural again. Sounds like a Glasgow drunk. <laughs> uh, sort of gravelly voice. But it was, to, I mean, to get it, work with George Lucas was brilliant. But there was, we went, he took me for lunch, and uh, it happened by accident. We were at Abbey Road. Hey, we were doing the recording at Abbey Road. Great time. <laughs> and uh, the computer crashed. And I remember when it crashed, uh, all these. Uh, you know, acolytes were saying, okay, uh, George, should we go for lunch? And he said, yeah, let's, uh, let's go for lunch, yeah. And I got to sit opposite him for about two and a half hours as he regaled everyone at the table about, you know, stock that he bought and things like that, you know. He, wow. It was quite impressive, you know, and the, the, the guy uh, sitting opposite was the producer, but the guy sitting to my left was a chap called Walter Murch, and he did all the, the sound on Apocalypse Now, Wow. You know, the helicopters wow. and you know, really impressive. And then the conversation, which was the Gene Hackman film, he did all the folio on it. So he's a bit of a legend. So once we figured all that out, I was just I'm going, Oh my goodness, and I was quite nervous. And the woman sitting to my right was uh Robin Garland, who is the casting director. She cast Forrest Gump. And she turned around, of course, I had done no, no telly. She turned around, she went, Lewis, do you do drama? And I said, No way, I've actually only done sketch comedy. Uh, oh. And if, I could almost, if Debbie, you were at the table, could I felt you kicking me under the table? Yes, he does drama. Yeah. Yes, he can ride a horse. Yes, yes, yes. yes. I just told him the truth. I said, yeah. no, I've not done very much. He went, okay, that's fine. You know, maybe you could send something over to me when you get the chance. Wow. And then I, you never told me that. Well, exactly. I mean, Keep going. I, I ate George Lucas's parsley off his plate that day and got told off by the exec producer. While he was chatting, <laughs> He'd finished no. off his wee dough balls and his plate, and I saw this wee sprig of parsley on his plate, and I thought, I'm not going to let that go to waste. I'd involuntarily just leaned over and took his parsley <laughs> yeah. off his plate and started eating it. And, the, and the, the exec producer, Rick McCallum, looked at me and he said, did you enjoy that, Lewis? And I looked up, and suddenly it turned into broken glass as it fell down my throat. <laughs> not at all. Oh, it was a really <laughs> solemn moment. <laughs> I tell you, Lewis, Jesus. I was at, um, I did a convention for Benny Dorm and we were all there, all the actors were there. Yeah. And um, my brother was one of the first stormtroopers of, um, of Star Wars. Oh, really? And this guy came up and everybody was signing and he said, your brother was one of the first stormtroopers, wasn't he? Could you sign this for me and put your brother's name and say that she was a storm? <laughs> I went, thanks. I said, do you want a Benny Dorm? And you went, no, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> How embarrassing is that? That's hilarious. Yeah. So like, it was almost like you were, you were vouching for him that he was a stormtrooper, but he wasn't interested in anything that you've done. <laughs> Nothing. Just a stormtrooper. I've been to Benny Dorm. It's a load of fish. <laughs> Please come back and see us soon. Oh, Please. Definitely. I'd love to. I mean, it's been so lovely to come on the show. Actually, I do conventions now just on that thing, and they're great fun. But they, um, yeah. they know more about your CV than you do. I mean, it's, you know, <laughs> they it's, do. It's unbelievable. Eh? They, they, some of the questions. Hi. Johnny, I can't wait to see you and hug you. Oh, likewise. When are we all going to meet up? When is this all going to be over? God knows. Well, we're working on it. Stay safe, Pla. <laughs> <laughs> if I make it back down to Westminster after my visit in Scotland, pretty well, blah, blah, blah. probably That's not a good bonus. It's in Westminster right now. Thank you, darling. Bundled into a car somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Love you. Love you too. Love you, Love you all. Bye. 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 Adios. Bye. Bye. Adios. Adios. Oh, he is so brilliant. So he knows everybody. everyone so perfectly. Total what delight. Lifting, oh my goodness. Lifting oh. experience. Well, and it is true, fabulous. you know, it's true. He actually did raise more money than anyone else because he was so charismatic on the floor. Of course. And the way he was doing, he took the auction over 
So we were selling everything. And then when it got to him, it was like, whoa, you know, (laughs) the money was pouring in. Amazing. Yeah. Anyway, incredible. So 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 what's happening on Wednesday? On Wednesday, we have got a fabulous guest. Um, She's not only absolutely gorgeous looking and beautiful person, but she's also very, very talented as, as a sculptor. Because she's done work, she's actually done the head of the Queen, Prince Philip, and Joan Collins. Duke, Joan Collins, absolutely. All the royalty, yeah. All the yes, complete television royalty as well, and film royalty. Um, and also now she's just completed the the head of Princess Anne, and there's a big documentary going out because Princess Anne is seventy, so she'll be telling us all about it. It's very very exciting. Fabulous. Yes, Frances Segelman. Frances, do you think she would do a Wonder Birds bust? I was just thinking that, actually, as I was saying it. But why not? No. Is that Harriet's bust or yes, our, a, our heads? A collection of busts. A collection of busts, yes. <laughs> <laughs> is she going to tell us what's in her makeup bag, though? That's what's Ah, important. this we, is we it. I, we, we, have to, we have to ask her, yes. yes. She's very beautiful. Mm. Great. Great, gorgeous. Fantastic. Right. Anyway, yeah. guys. We are now trying to get over Lewis McLeod. Well, I'm always trying to get over him. He's still, still exhausted from that conversation. Yeah. yeah. So we will I see you. Him, we'll see you on Wednesday. Bye. See you Wednesday. Okay, bye. bye.